friends, greetings from my home time. Happy New Year to you. It is actually New Year's Eve and I'm just chilling in my apartment, having a quiet night because uh, I drive a truck, I live in a truck and I don't know how to socialize anymore. <laughs> no, uh, I have some editing to do. I'm kind of behind on that front. So I thought I would take some time to do that. But I wanted to record a little bit because I watched a video early today, earlier by this old guy, 379. I definitely recommend that channel and I'll put a link to the video that I'm gonna talk about uh, in the description of this video, so check that out. He represents the exact type of YouTube channels I would like to see more of, very experienced drivers talking in very straightforward terms about their own observations about things that are going on in the industry and like things that they have seen change. That kind of thing to me is so valuable. And I think in the trucking space, there are a lot of, um, I feel like there's too much, too many channels that are kind of dramatic or they're focused on like, here's my, here was my settlement and, you know, or like complaining, which is probably what I do most of the time. But no, um, <laughs> I personally really, really, really value someone like him who has, who, I don't know his name, by the way. So, uh, old guy 379, tell us your name. If you comment on this video, please. He has 33 years of driving experience and I really appreciate the way that he talks about things. He's just very straightforward. And I also like the fact that even though, you know, you can get an idea that he is a person probably has some very strong opinions on certain things. He does a great job of talking about things, uh, from kind of a diplomatic standpoint, which I think is really, really important. When we're talking about these things that affect all of us in this industry, I think we have to find a way to invite everybody to the table and have these discussions. And the more that truck drivers can kind of like, not just truck drivers, but different types of laborers throughout our country, the people that actually keep this country moving, the more that we can kind of come together over the big picture things that actually affect us and um, how we're all being fleeced <laughs> Well, we're doing so much, like we're doing all this labor, I feel like we need to be as united as we possibly can. So I really appreciate somebody like him and you should check out his channel. If you do check out his video, please take a second to like that video and subscribe and leave a comment for him to help boost him in the algorithm because that type of content is valuable. When when someone has a, has a very well-earned, hard-earned, wise perspective on things, um, I think we need to like do our best to, to amplify that voice however we can. So this particular video, I guess he made one recently that, that uh, a lot of people saw, which was about the 11 and 14. Um, those of you who know, if you know, you know, <laughs> basically the way the DOT clock functions. Uh, the most recent video that I'm commenting on right now was about, um, the, about speed governing. And I guess there's been a lot of talk about, you know, there being some type of a bill they're trying to pass or they're trying to get all trucks, all trucks, not just like these mega carrier trucks or whatever to be governed at 65, which those of us who drive, who have been driving, who are in the industry for any length of time know that is an absolute nightmare scenario for a variety of reasons. I feel like this is why I'm recommending his video because my perspective is so much more limited because I've only been driving for a little less than two years. Actually, it was it was this month two years ago that I got my CDL, but I didn't technically start driving until late February, I want to say sometime in February. So that's when I'll actually hit my two year mark. But I'm a novice in this industry. It takes a lot longer than a couple of years to really gain experience. So a couple of the things that he talked about, I'll do my best to lend my perspective, but I'm saying it's kind of limited because I've only been driving a couple of years. But one of the things that you figure out when you start driving, if you do drive a truck that's governed at 65, which I've driven a couple now, you know, you have people racing around you. Um, you end up with these snail race situations where you and another truck who maybe can go a mile an hour faster than you or half a mile an hour faster than you. Th it's this weird ego thing where this person just has to get around you. They can't sit behind you. And I'm going to tell you and be honest, when I first started driving, I would pull that kind of shit because I didn't know because nobody had told me, hey, don't do that. And I should have known because that's just common sense. But I was being a dumbass because sometimes when you're new at things, you're kind of a dumbass and it takes a little experience or someone correcting you to realize like, oh, that's not cool. Don't do that. You know, I've driven trucks that were governed at 65. The truck I'm in now is governed at 67 with 70 on the PassSmart. For those of you who don't know, PassSmart is a feature on a lot of governed trucks like Freightliners that allows you to double tap the fuel pedal and, and for a given period of time during the day, you're able to speed up to a faster speed to allow you to pass people. And that is an important safety 
feature because sometimes you really need to get around people who are going too slow. This is something that if you are already a driver, I don't need to explain to you, but if you're not a driver, a lot of this stuff is impacted by the weight of the load that you're hauling and where you are geographically. So if you are um, in an area where it's very hilly and there's a vehicle that's suddenly in front of you that's going much slower than you and you're loaded close to 80,000 pounds, you are like that you're loaded so that your your total weight is close to 80,000 pounds. You don't want to be in a situation where you are struggling to stay away from that person that's in front of you. Ideally, you want to be able to pass them and sometimes you're going to need to use that extra few miles an hour in order to pass them. Or there's situations where you're out west where the speed limits are much higher and you need to be able to get around. You need to be able to move a little bit faster. These lower speed limits are a safety concern, they're a hazard. The thing that's stupid about them and some of what he talked about in his video, and I'm completely paraphrasing, so hopefully I will get this accurate, but you know, he, he got into talking about experience and, and uh, training in later on in the video, which I thought was so important because a big part of what's wrong with these, you know, these mega carriers having all their trucks governed at 65, they're doing it to control fuel costs because that's the number number one cost of doing business. They say it's safety, but anybody who's been trucking for any length of time knows that safety, safety is mostly theatrics in the trucking world. And then it's also everything is controlled like everything in the world is controlled by insurance companies. So the insurance company is gonna give them a better rate to have 18,000 stupid safety features on the truck. These are computers, they're sensors, they are not always accurate. It's like, think about the very scary, very dangerous situations that we see happening with self-driving cars. These are just another facet of a self-driving type of mechanism where you have a sensor that, for example, you are approaching an overpass that has a shadow that it casts and that shadow is seen by the truck as an obstacle and so it suddenly starts hitting the brakes. This kind of thing is a safety issue or it's like all the time when you're going on an on-ramp or an off-ramp, you guys who drive know it's going to see the ramp, it's the, the barrier around the edge of the ramp as an obstacle and it's going to start setting off your collision warning. And if you're an inexperienced driver and you're not used to these little alarms going off that you can't like imagine it's or like anticipate it's going to happen, it's stressful, it's distracting, and it's ineffective. It doesn't help anything, but guess what? It helps this company show the insurance company, oh, look at our safe trucks. It's all theatrics. It's all designed to save money for the carrier. Meanwhile, another major thing, I was, I, I said this in a comment on his video that like, I've worked now, I've only been in trucking for two years. I've driven for what, four or five different companies. The one company that I actually made a decent, mostly consistent income with was a reefer company. And a big reason I left that company is because I was only getting paid 51 cents a mile to run reefer, which I think is not. I try when I start to feel like I'm getting hosed, which most of us in this business are getting hosed, unless we're more experienced and know how to avoid getting hosed. <laughs> um, you know, but when I really feel like, okay, this is not right for me to accept this, then I'll walk away from it. But what's so messed up is because I was running west, because I was running on, not always, but often on flatter terrain, but you know, obviously when you're going out west, you're going through like Idaho and Utah and stuff. So I was definitely doing my fair share of mountain driving, but my truck was governed at 70 and I was getting somewhat more consistent, slightly longer runs, but I wasn't running crazy long miles but I was getting paid better and a lot of it had to do with the fact that my truck was governed at 70. Since I've been at these other companies, I might be making closer to, I usually don't, you guys know, I don't usually talk specifics about money because I think it's gross. It's just not, no offense, but it's, it's not for me. But if I'm making something close to 10 cents more per mile, give or take, you know, which I have at different jobs, you know, more than closer to 10 cents more per mile, than I made at that reefer company, but my paychecks are significantly less. What does that tell you? It's It has a lot to do with the fact that I can't run as fast and that also impacts the way that you're able to navigate through traffic and it makes it less safe. Basically what it does is it takes control away from the driver. And so let me back up because I started to say this and then I went on a tangent, but in his video, old guy 379 started talking about training and the, the fact that training is a big part of the issue. And this is something I can definitely speak to as a newer driver. When I went to CDL school, I went to a private CDL school. I was not about to go to a company and let them, 
you know, hold me hostage for two years. So by the way, if you're getting into this industry, you're thinking about it, strongly recommend you look into getting the WIOA grant, W-I-O-A grant to pay for trucking school. I think it's absolutely absurd that in a country that depends so heavily on the labor of truck drivers that literally any truck driver would be in debt or beholden to a trucking company in order to get a CDL. I think that's total crap. So that aside, I went to a CDL school that was a, a private school. That school pushed me through. They tried to make me take the CDL exam before I felt ready and I told them I don't wanna take it yet and they were really high pressure trying to make me take it sooner. Oh no, you got this, you're good. Dude, I was, I was, so inadequate. I could not, I could barely do what was required to pass, just to pass. Those schools, as we all know, they don't teach you how to drive a truck. They teach you how to move the truck and like how to make the truck itself function. And they teach you how to memorize like a pre-trip inspection, but it's nowhere near enough time. I think I was at like four weeks into the school when they were trying to get me out because they want that grant. That's a school that accepts that $4,500 grant money or whatever it was, they want to get me through so they can get someone else's grant money, which is crap. But unfortunately, this is a big part of the problem. And then I ended up going to a super small company. They actually weren't terrible in some ways and the way they taught me wasn't that bad, but it wasn't, there was also a lot missing. I ended up going to Schneider. I ended up getting more thorough, somewhat more in-depth training and that was really good. However, when I went to train with my TE, which is training engineer is their jargon. It's, it's the person who trains you. No shade on her. I think she did the best she could for where she was at in her trucking career, but she had less than a year of experience or around a year. I've been driving for two years and I don't th feel that I, I mean, I, I could see myself being a trainer, but not right now. I think I would want to have more experience first, but these trucking companies take someone who as as uh, in his video, what he, an old guy 379, sorry, I keep calling you that. I'm sorry, I don't know your actual name. But as he said in his video, how are you going to take someone who's never driven through all four seasons yet and have them go teach somebody else who's brand new? I mean, there's so much trucking as a constant learning experience. So you really can't be in the best place to adequately train others if you haven't been driving for at least I would say a few years at least. We all know that's not the reality. Trucking companies obviously don't wanna pay what they should pay to have people, they don't, this is what it always comes back to. If people are properly incentivized, they will do it. If people are properly incentivized to train new drivers, new CDL holders, they're gonna take that, they're gonna take that on. If the people coming through from CDL schools have enough just basic education in how to operate a truck to be ready to be trained, then they're gonna do better with that trainer. But so many of these trainers have bad experiences with the incoming students. And then so many of the students have bad experiences with the trainers, either because the trainer is inexperienced or some of the stories I've heard, the trainer is is uh, old school, shall we say, and doesn't know how to behave inappropriate or be, does know how to behave inappropriately, especially when you have gender dynamics that can be kind of complicated or racial dynamics. These things are are real. They're just a reality of of the trucking world, of the the working world, you know. So trucking companies could invest in having better training. They there could be more regulation or mandates or whatever you want to call it on trucking schools. People should be training for longer. People should have a sufficient enough, and this is this is something I feel strongly about. I, I'm a person who dislikes bigotry, but you need to have an adequate handle on the English language in order to drive. And I'm not saying you have to be like an English major, but you need to be able to read signage like that, that kind of thing, or you need to be able to read your bills of lading to understand what you need to understand. Those types of things to me should be basic expectations that are reasonable for this type of an industry or any other like highly dangerous skill that we're taking on. So let's give people the tools to be prepared to do these jobs then. 
Let's give them whatever kind of education that they might need, but let's not just throw people out there who aren't ready, who don't have adequate understanding of what they need to understand to be safe on the road. These kinds of things are really important. And then let's not promote stupid ass snail races by having every truck governed. That is just a totally crazy idea. It's totally unsafe. It, it treats truck drivers like we're villains when we are the people that move every single thing that people buy in the stores. They depend on us. They We already deal with enough abuse from car drivers on the road slash four wheelers, whatever you want to call them, to take it to another extreme and make it so that we're all forced to crawl and the car drivers are like flying around us being even more dangerous and more of a menace than they already are, like, no. And it's also gonna throttle our income even more, which I'm sure the trucking companies love because they'll take anything they can to make it so that we can make less money, they can pay us less to do the same amount of labor for them. They all do it, they all do it. Pretty much. I'm sure there's a couple good ones out there, but <laughs> I haven't found one yet. So anyway, uh, that's all I got to say. I hope this is somewhat useful. This is longer than I intended it to be, but that was my two cents. Uh, go check out Old Guy 379 I will put a link in the description below. Check that out. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to his videos if you want some quality trucking content from somebody who actually knows how to walk the walk, because that dude has been driving for a long time. He's done a lot of different types of driving from from uh, livestock hauling to flatbed to other, which I don't know all what he's done, but he's done a lot. And uh, he seems like someone that could uh, teach us all a thing or two. So check him out and thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.